Let's talk about the former Kill Tony host who got fucking convicted of fucking first degree murder. Can you believe that? Can you believe in that? The former Kill Tony, not host, sorry, um, contestant on Kill Tony was convicted of fucking first degree murder right um it says it's courtesy of the guardian it says ex-boyfriend given life without parole for murder of a hollywood therapist so this is the lady that got killed unfortunately it says the former boyfriend of a famed sex therapist um amy harwick has been sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole after he was convicted of her murder gareth gareth purse house that's the kill tony former guy 45 was found guilty in september of first degree murder for killing the 38 year old harwick at a los angeles home in february 2020 prosecutors said that purse house planned to kill harwick after becoming obsessed with her following the couple's breakup more than a decade ago wow they broke up a decade ago and he was still obsessed with her in that way legit batshit crazy i thought it was a former girl ex-girlfriend jesus the evidence showed that purse house was obsessed with amy harwick he left it he felt entitled to her prosecutors said purse house broke into harwick's home waited several hours for her and then strangled and punched her as she attempted to fight him off he then threw her over the balcony oh my god bro oh my god police arrived at harwick's home after someone um called down and one reported they'd heard a woman screaming harwick was found unconscious but alive but police are, but when police arrived died shortly after arriving at the hospital fuck she must have been in so much pain an autopsy found that harwick died from blunt force injuries to the head and torso and from manual strangulation purse house harwick had previously dated for 18 months before she filed a restraining order against him in 2012 Harwick took out an additional protective order against Purse House, which expired in 2015. Month for the murder, Harwick reportedly bumped into Purse House at a work event where Purse House was taking photos. Friends of Harwick and Purse House became angry at Harwick, who rebuffed Purse House's attempts to stay in touch with her. Harwick also repeatedly sent text messages to friends and emailed to herself, expressing that she was scared of Purse House after their chance encounter. Her friends said that she became a therapist and relationship advisor because of her personal experiences jesus christ bro so this is the kind of clip of him in court let's play this uh juror number one is it correct that the jury has a verdict yes. you can have the verdict formed over to the bailiff please He kind of looks like Axe J, in it? He kind of looks like Jay Shorb, in it? Like, no? A little bit like Jay Shorb? Tiny bit like Jay Shorb? Or no? <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Clerk, if you would read the verdicts onto the record, please. Superior Court of the State of California, County of Los Angeles, Department 107, case number BA-485. Why did he get a death penalty, by the way? I guess because the California doesn't have death penalty. Maybe that's why. But someone like that just deserves to die, to be fair. Do you know what I mean? The way he fucking brutalized and fucking harassed this woman for 10 plus years and then killed her the way he did. Just kill him. Fuck it. No one's going to miss this fucking cunt. 380, people of the State of California versus Garrett Pursehouse. As to count one. We, the jury, the above entitled action finding defendant, Gareth Pursehouse, guilty of the crime of murder in the first Good. degree in violation of penal code section right 187, subsection A, a crime. Lawyer did not budge at all. She did not flinch. She knew what was happening. Lawyer knew instantly. She didn't even flinch. As charged in count one of the information. We further find the allegation that Gareth Pursehouse, Gareth Pursehouse intentionally killed Amy Harwick by means of lying in wait within the meaning of penal code section 190.2. Subsection A, subsection 15. Exactly, that's what makes it worse. He was lying in wait. He wasn't even like they're going to some sort of argument, which wouldn't make it justifiable in any way, shape, or form. But there was no like nothing. He just basic he basically planned it out. This is def the definition of premeditated. Be true. Dated September 28, 2023, juror number one four person. Account two. Yo, that that police officer in the background's got a fucking wagon, isn't it? He's got a front, he's got a front fucking 
whatever that that thing is called and he's got a bum on him in it fucking hell look at the size of that guy from behind that's a fucking unit jesus christ where do you even get pants to fit that size yo that f is this a guy or a woman i guess that's manly hands in it that's a dude Look how skinny his hands are compared to how fat he is. Wow. A subsection 15 to be true. Dated September 28th, 2020. Look, he turns aside. Look at that. That Look at that. That is a fucking... He's got a little bit of a kick there. So you know usually when you're fat, you don't really have like a bum bum. You just have like mass. He actually got a little bit of a kick. It's a little bit of a... That's a donkey butt. When he's walking down in the courtroom, that, that shit is jangling. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching with the, with the fucking keys on the lanyard. That shit is fucking jangling, right? With the keys on his fucking, on his car carabrina, however you fucking call those little hook things, right? That fucking ass is shaking from left to right. Look at that little kick at the back there. Look at that. That is a bum and a half, bro. Jeez. One, four person. Just to count two. We the bug. We the jury. The bug and <laughs> we the bug. Oi, look at that. Guilty of the crime of burglary in the first degree in violation of penal code section 459, a crime as charged in count two of the information. We further find the allegation that a person was present in the residence during the commission of burglary to be true. Dated September 28, 2023, juror number one, four persons. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, are these your verdicts? So say you one, so say you all. Yes. yes. Thank you. Would either side like the jury poll? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, as I call your jury number, please answer yes or no to the following question. Are these your verdicts and findings on the special allegation? Jury number one? Yes. Jury number two? Yes. Jury number three? Yes. Jury number four? Yes. Jury number five? Yes. Jury number six? Yes. Jury number seven? Yes. Jury number eight? Yes. Black guy. Jury number nine? Yes. Jury White guy? Number ten? Yes. Jury Black guy? Number eleven? Yes. Jury White guy? 12. White woman. Well, ladies and gentlemen, obviously this <laughs> now completes your jury service. I want to thank you. I gave you an estimate when this case started. I was unforeseen that the COVID uh, illness was going to hit, and you were very diligent. I got to say that, and I thank you all. Even the alternates, uh, sometimes you're the unsung heroes in this as well. Thank you so much. Uh, but that's the only way our system works, and that's with your participation. And uh, uh, I wish you all luck, and you are dismissed. So you got found guilty, but there's no sentencing just yet, right? Well, how many years did he get? He didn't get sentenced yet, has he? So you got found guilty of first degree murder. I'm sure he'll get life. But let's actually see the video um, from Kill Tony, actually, that sort of surmises the whole thing from their account from a while back. It's just from when? Three years ago. Let's play this clip. Because they were somehow weirdly proud about it. They also, I guess maybe because it proved that Kill Tony is like a real show with actual real contestants on there and real people. I don't know. But the way they made this compilation and put it on their account, kind of tasteless. I'm not going to lie. Kind of tasteless. But hey, Stand up comedians, what do you expect? All right. No shit. Put your hands together for your next comedian, Gareth. Is Gareth here? Just one word, Gareth? That's interesting. <laughs> uh oh, here he comes, everybody. It's a real human. Oh, that way, Gareth. Go back that way. It's dream. Dream, dream, dream. Here he is. One more time for Gareth, everybody. Oh, I think I kind of remember him too. I'm not going to lie. I think I kind of remember him too. I think I kind of remember him too. He had very much, he had a lot of psycho energy to him. Again, not to like try to play fucking Monday morning fucking quarterback on it, but I'm pretty sure I remember him having a lot of psycho energy. He came across, like, I think he creeped out the, the guys on the panel. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I remember this as well. Everybody, come on. Hello, everybody. All right, let me uh, spin around this. There we go. Well, thank you very much. It's great to be here in all the best parts of entertainment. We've got most of a band, We've got morning radio sound effects, sometimes a full band when a toy kazoo comes from the ground, raises from the grave, takes over Tony and starts singing. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a boo. I think he froze. So uh, back to popular. <laughs> Uh, so over the summer, Trump took all, yanked all the troops out of Syria, right? And then ISIS got loose. They're knocking on doors, running away or something like that. And I, really I don't know. My first clue that he's a psycho and he's giving murderer vibes, he's wearing a button-up T-shirt with no undershirt. Not even a vest. He's wearing a button-up shirt with no undershirt, no vest, and it's untucked with jeans, with baggy jeans and vans. There's something very weird about this outfit. 
He's not too sure if he's going smart casual, business casual, relaxed, Friday night drink with the lads, going to pick up his kids. You know, the, the outfit's kind of together, but all over the place at the same time. So is the haircut. Like, the haircut doesn't match what he's wearing, right? You see that head? You would not never imagine he's wearing those jeans. It's very odd, the outfit. If you just think about it from a practical point of view, where's he going? The DMV? Target? Dive bar, whorehouse, kitty playground. Where's he going? You have no idea. Really how it works. And uh, I thought he should have asked uh, Tony that it's a bad idea because he has broke the bank relying on the pullout method. Quickest coming comedian comedy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's laughing at his own jokes. We already know from Brendan Schaub, if you laugh at your own jokes, you are a psychopath. So he's laughing at his own terrible jokes, right? Look, 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 look at that. He's absolutely crying over his jokes that's a sign of somebody that's probably going to kill their ex-girlfriend and throw over the balcony because you have to remember that 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 excruciating detail he not only lied in wait for her to come back home he punched her beat her up strangled her and then chucked her off the fucking balcony and it wasn't even high enough to kill her that 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 drop because she probably lived on the first floor or something so she was still lying there you know unconscious still alive can you imagine <laughs> Uh, anyway, so I have bad news for the people, for the entertainers over there. <laughs> okay? Okay. I have bad news for the entertainers over there. The yeah. best oh, yeah. day of your career is going to be the days after you die. What? When, uh, the like days? Skyrocket in price. Can I continue? Can I? It's close. It's Go ahead, okay, okay. Go ahead. The painting skyrocket in, ah, skyrocket in, in price. Redbox starts uh, holding some... <laughs> Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. A movie from 1962 but what about the porn talent what happens with them is it just uh, Red Band at Home singing she was so underappreciated in her time alright alright I'm not gonna lie oh my god MK you f MK you fucking cunt you got me before I said it MK you fucking cunt you got me before I said it I was just about to say isn't he giving BGL isn't this guy giving BGL doesn't this guy sound like exactly like BGL? MK. Doesn't he come across exactly like BGL? The energy, the cadence, the fake humility. Like, because BGL has this, like, that's why he's dangerous, right? Because he's fucking jacked, right? He's huge, right? But BGL has this fake sincerity thing have you noticed it bjo has this like veneer of sincerity and humility and awkwardness and humbleness but underneath that you know there's a rage there's a fucking rage that guy if he snaps somebody's gonna die that's not like a i'm gonna push you somebody's gonna die he's gonna push you your head's gonna hit the, the side of your kitchen cabinet your neck's gonna break he's not gonna call the police He's not going to call the ambulance or the ambulance, as black people say in America, the ambulance, right? As you can see, he's picking up my car. He doesn't let me go. You know, he hit it. He doesn't let me go. He doesn't let me the fuck go. He doesn't let me go. He's attacking me. He's attacking me. He's attacking me. He's going to fucking bury your body in a very shallow grave <laughs> and continue living like nothing happened. That's the same rage that this guy has. That fake humility and sincerity belies a very angry, frustrated, pissed. Because the other thing I realized too is this. And I remember I said this before, right? And I'm going to be the psycho analyst, the psycho analyst guy, right? When I was talking about BGL, one thing I noticed before I found out that he went to the San Francisco College of Performing Arts or something, right? He went to some stand-up college or something, right? I remember when I first started looking at clips of BGL, the first thing that sort of like sprung to mind for me was that he was giving off energy of somebody who felt like he was better than the people he was working for. He felt like he was an undiscovered genius, an undiscovered entertainment star or something. So I always felt to myself, it's going to be hard for him to play second fiddle to somebody like Brendan or be submissive or be agreeable, whatever it may be, to someone like Brendan, because Brendan's a legit redact. Like, he's legitimately 
like dumb, right? But he's figured out a way to be successful. But when you're somebody that feels like you are entitled to that level of success and that the world has done you wrong and everyone's conspiring against you, when you encounter something like a Brendan, it's going to do a lot of weird things to your ego. It's going to really fuck with your psyche because nothing makes sense because you are obviously somebody that feels like you're entitled to something. Then you meet someone like a Brendan who doesn't tick any of those boxes or it goes completely against what you kind of you know see as success it's going to really fuck with your brain so it wasn't no surprise to me that he ended the way he ended because deep down bgl despised brendan <laughs> for his career and what he had achieved because deep down he probably felt like he should be deserving of that level of success and i get the same energy with this guy he came in doing some like inside baseball like even coin it mentioned it like he was trying to like make a joke of the show he was on to try to appear like he was one of the comedians like trying to get this we like you know what I mean like he, you can tell he thinks he's on the same level as these guys like i'm a comedian too just like you guys get it like he's like what so he probably doesn't even know he did bad he has no idea he did bad he probably thinks he did amazingly well that's a psycho so this is giving strong BGL. Big up fucking MK. You fucking sussed it out there, man. You fucking sussed it out. Exactly. There we go, Koyla. BGL, fake being smart while fake being humble. Exactly. That's the issue. That's the main issue that was really bizarre about him as well in that regard. Um, I still want him to get his money because, you know, I hate people when they don't pay you and shit. But there's no denying that they do share a little bit of similarities. This guy and fucking BGO. Fuck, you know, it's crazy. Hey, there you go, Gareth. You did it. Doing the age-old broken method of trying to roast the people that the audience is here to see. Exactly. Uh, that's good. How do you feel, Gareth? Shaky. Shaky? Shaky yeah. Is this your first time on a stage? <laughs> on a real stage, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What other kind of stage have like you been Like when there's on? like five comedians. That oh, comedians. I wish it was stage four. <laughs> 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 that was, that Gareth, old band was so good. Gareth, Gareth, Gareth. So you tried to do jokes about us, and that it never wasn't really my original works. plan. I was just writing normal jokes, and then right. it kept twisting easily into just stupid roasts. And I figured you guys are roast people, so I thought I'd try it out. How did it go? <laughs> I don't know. I was writing. You see what I mean? He feels like he's a writer. He feels like he's an undiscovered genius. Like I was. What that was writing to you? That was what you call writing. Doesn't sound like good. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. The Mao, Garrett. The <laughs> fucking Mao. No, it doesn't. So uh, you just started stand-up comedy? Uh, I've been writing a lot for about two or three. You years. You see? Like you see what I mean? Writing. He keeps mentioning the writing thing. You guys, I thought you would have got it because you guys are roasters too. He thinks he's one of the guys. He thinks he's him. He thinks he's one of the lads. He thinks he's part of the fucking crew. He is this meme. What's that meme? um what's that what's that what's that podcast meme he's the podcast meme you know that meme of that kid eating cereal and people in the advert are fucking doing it yeah he's this he's that fucking meme he's this meme bro he's the podcast meme this one here that is what he is he's that fucking meme he really is that meme he thinks he's one of the fucking lads he thinks he's one of the crew no you're not bro if you're on Kill Tony and you're performing on that show and your name got drawn out of a hat, that's the reason why you're on that show, to be part of that crew. You want to be a part of the crew. But you're not part of it just because you're on the stage. Come on, bro. What the fuck? But I've barely ever tried to get on action. When you say barely ever, what do you mean? You've done a couple open mics or from this just is your like first? The, or it's like a couple comedians that try themselves like a, like a year ago. But other than that, nothing. How what? Come? Because it went Busy. like that. Yeah. No, no. Uh, I'd say the mix. Busy. A mix of the good and bad on the other ones. But right. What do you do for work? Software engineer. Uh huh. And how old are you? Yeah, you can tell. Or forty one. Yeah. What do you? Do? What are your hobbies? <laughs> Honestly, software engineers make a lot of money, don't they? For the most part, right? I'm assuming a software engineer's salary has got to be like what sixty k or something. Why are you doing this? Why would you waste your time? trying to do stand-up comedy in your 40s when you're a software engineer unless he's lying why would you do that work your job take your money go to some whorehouses in fucking central europe or go to eastern europe i'm sure you can ask bobby lee he'll give you some recommendations of where you can you know if you like underage girls you can go over there 
But why the fuck would you waste your time and your money to do stand up when you're a software engineer? Why would you do that? Okay, people say triple that, daughter. Okay, cool. Triple 60K. North of 150. Why would you waste your time doing stand up, honestly? So bizarre, bro. You have, actually have a career, an actual real job, actual prospects. <laughs> you can actually build a life with that, you know? Start a family, business, <laughs> help out your family. So many things. But here you are doing stand up. What are things about you in your things real I life? Do. I like to build stuff. Like, I'm a work with my hands kind of guy, your projects, always trying to think of like a cool invention. <laughs> work with my hands type of guy. Famous last words. <laughs> yeah, you work with your hands, all right? You fucking murder people, bro. That kind of thing. That's, or traveling. That's, like, that's what? What have you come up with? What are some. What? Uh, Uche, I know doctors who do stand up. That's sad, man. That's sad. That's all super sad. If I saw a doctor DJing, I'd be saying, I'd be like, dude, really? Really? DJ, really? Have your inventions. I wouldn't, I, nothing successful. Right now I'm trying to figure out a... How to have the worst Kill Tony set ever. <laughs> <laughs> if you build it. I miss These guys must be so lucky that he didn't get... They didn't roast him hard enough because imagine if he would have put them on their list. <laughs> he would have put them down on the list. If he... For sure, this guy could have could have killed Tony Hinchcliffe. He would have squeezed Tony Hinchcliffe's head like a fucking raisin. I know, I the horse of truth has arrived. Like right now, I'm trying to find. I'm trying to figure out a water con conservation pro uh, uh, project. Let me tell you something. Whoa. There's no way you're gonna be that guy. No, you're not gonna. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah just give up on that. Yeah, you're right. No. Ah, exactly. Give up on that. Let me tell you something. I love that. Honestly, just give up, man. You're fucking useless. Get a filter for your washer. Or, you know your shower head, so you don't use as much water. That's about it. <laughs> there you go. Red Man just it. solved it. Everybody. That's exactly how it works. Good use job. less water. Mm -hmm. Why did you? Why are you a one-name comedian? <laughs> oh, my name. My last name's long, so I just didn't bother. What? Do, okay. My, my last name's Purse House. It's too long to write. What is it? Purse House. Purse house? <laughs> he, he is planning a murder. That's why he didn't want to give me his last name. He's planning to fucking kill his ex girlfriend. That's why he didn't want to give me his DLs. <laughs> house? <laughs> wow. Too long to write, huh? It's two words we all know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It sounds like a drag club. <laughs> a drag club. <laughs> purse house. Yeah, that's comedy, brother. Look at him. Look at him. Look, look, why are you standing there also? So that's interesting. Uh, you have a girlfriend? Uh, no, but I'm here with a way too hot date. Oh, wow. You have, a, you have a girlfriend? No. Well, yes. Well, no. What do you, what do you define as girlfriend? Does she have to be alive? Oh, Not anymore. <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> She's gone, Gareth. She's fucking she's Mohammed gone. in yeah. the back of the room right now. We can all see her. No, she's gone. She's fucking Indian Brad Pitt. All she heard was Brad Pitt. She's wasted right now. She's um, what's it? Somebody asked me a question here. Where is it? Um, Ryan Joseph, AZ, can you play the new video from Beige Frequency just dropped? I have to ask for the next stream, brother. I won't be able to do it now, but I'll definitely add it for the next stream. I've seen it already. It's um the reviewing. There's what the Steve one, right? I'll do that for the next stream, brother, but not for now. But thank you for the suggestion, my friend. Just taking it. Uh, that's fun. Gareth, so how do you get a chick that's way too hot for you? How does that work out? Luck. Luck? Yeah. Do you just have it? You only have your height on your dating profile? Yeah, that's it. Just <laughs> <laughs> hey, everything else, it starts to drop off fast. I mean, you're handsome. Yeah. Thanks. He's yeah. a good looking guy. Yeah. It's helpful. Yeah, Let's in a retarded team leader at Target <laughs> kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. A retarded team leader. <laughs> look at look at how he's the way he looks at people as well is a bit scary, no? Look at him, he's like It's so tense, it's so like direct. Huh. Like weird. I love it. Like fucking, <laughs> it looks like if Clark Kent went into a phone booth just to call his grandmother. 
I have Superman for Halloween a couple of times. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> it's, and that's exactly what I get every time. Like, no shit. Oh, yeah. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> Garrett. The whole, I'm the drunk. Whole, I swear to God, send me drinks, everybody. All right. The whole unit gets defensive when people take shots with their 60 seconds. Yeah, no, I like what you guys do. I just thought it would be fun, but... You, you're a fan of the show. You ever watch it or listen yeah, to I've it? Yeah, I've come here a couple of times, but I, of course I cut up here the date I, uh, like I have. Give a us date. an example <laughs> of a joke you were going to say before we all lost respect for you. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I'd Just have do to. Do one, one normal joke. I don't have everything. Your remember. best joke. My best. Yeah, I don't come have on. stuff. Memory. Come on. You have one fucking joke that doesn't have to do with me or Red Band or whatever you uh, did. I had, I had one today where uh, I've been told by, I, I was talking to an ex from a long time ago and she told me that before. Talking like, to a what? Was that, was that um, Jeremiah really got left behind when they went to, uh, to Death and Ramen. It's really good. It's on, it's, it's done as short films before. Okay, cool. It's 14 minutes. It's on what? Tiger G channel. Who's Tiger G? You mean Tiger Belly? Or Ty is that something else? Or is it another channel? Let me see if I can find it. Actually, let me finish this first and I'll, I'll try and find it. Bear with me. I was talking to an ex uh -huh. and she told me that when we first met, she thought I had, a, she thought my personality meant I had a small dick. And then I talked to another ex and she told me the same exact thing. And I just want to make it perfectly clear right now that my dick size is private. <laughs> wow. What a what? Fucking hell. Wild swing you took on... Don't boo him. I what a wild... I, I, I don't have any memory. Yeah, what a wild swing you took bringing up hot date for the first time to this. <laughs> Just like, I hope I'm any good at stand-up comedy. <laughs> She's a real hot date now because she just lit herself on fire in the corner there. I can see. It's the hottest date, dude. Well, I'm really glad you came up here because I didn't think it was possible for me to hate a man as much as I hate my <laughs> husband. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gareth, uh, you know, you gave it a shot. I would love to see you come back sometime if this is something that you actually think that you might enjoy doing when it goes well. Yeah, uh, I write literally constantly. I just don't memorize it. Uh, right. <laughs> I write constantly. What does it matter if you write constantly if it's that bad? Does it actually matter? This is the thing. I wonder if this is the. I wonder if this is the. I wonder if this is the natural consequence of stand up comedians on podcasts talking about how hard they work. There's people out there that think if they just sit down and write jokes for long enough, they're going to be funny. I wonder if this is the natural, this is the unintended consequence of hustle culture in stand up comedy. Because you hear a lot of it, innit? There's a lot of that hustle culture in stand up comedy where it's like sets and reps, I'm writing all the time, bro, bro, bro. It's like, bro, it doesn't matter how much you're writing if you're just terrible, right? If you're not funny, if you have no sense of humor, if you can't write funny jokes, why does it matter if you're spending every single hour of your day writing them? You're just writing more terrible stand up jokes, no? But hey, what do I know? I, uh, I'm pretty sure the first the first kid to use the the phrase "I'm uh, way to go Einstein" was a bully on the playground. Way to uh, go Einstein. Yeah, it was a bully Stupid on the joke. playground. <laughs> but why? But why? Why was that funny? Why would a why like would a, that? A, oh yeah, uh, a bully on the playground in 1880. So like, okay, yeah. so that makes yeah. that's so important to the joke. Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> He's so fucking, fucking redacted. Man, I wish that woman was still alive, man. R.I.P. to fucking, honestly, R.I.P. to fucking, um, what's her name? Uh, R.I.P. to Amy Harwick. Honestly, R.I.P. to Amy Harwick. I wish you had a sharp object next to you or there was a fucking, uh, an award you won near you where you could have clubbed that guy over the head. He doesn't deserve to be alive. He really doesn't deserve to be alive. He's not funny. He's fucking got a lot of psycho energy. He may have other body, sorry, buried somewhere. You deserve to be alive right now, man. You didn't deserve to be bumping into such a redact like that. I wish you had a an object, a weapon next to you when he came into your house or something or whatever, or so you screamed loud enough because this is so unfair, bro. This guy's a fucking piece of shit. And he's not even, like, at least if you're going to murder somebody, be fucking funny. You know what I mean? Don't be a fucking waste of space, a waste of a human. Fuck that dude. Fuck him. Fuck him. I mean, I don't think it would have made it work, but it would have made it make sense. Yeah. yeah. I, I would, wish. I would say that joke is two percent there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, milkman. All right, there goes Gareth. Everybody, we're gonna keep moving. There goes Gareth. There we go. You gotta be careful up here, people. You gotta be careful. This is not a game. 
is not a joke. I want to see his date. So let's bad. uh let's yeah. hope he let's hope he hangs himself so we can say way to go Epstein. <laughs> yeah. Wish you would hang. Hmm? Wish you would going, to be dude, fair. You leaving your hot date? He just yeah. he just shit his pants up here. Yeah. He's going to the restroom. That's a fucking talent agent from CAA who just signed him. <laughs> Congratulations, Garrett. Wow. Incredible. Wow. Dreams do come true here at Kill Tony. It's that easy. Pull the name out of the bucket. Anyway, so that happened. Um, again, thoughts and feelings go out to Amy Hardwick and her family. Um, yeah, she didn't deserve to go out that way. That guy's a fucking piece of shit. Hope he gets buried under the jail. Hope he gets fucking shanked in the shower while he's washing his fucking hair. What an absolute piece of shit. So R.I.P. Amy Harwick. R.I.P. Amy Harwick.